Uh, so, a little bit about me to start off with, because I I've come from more of a software background and probably not the same kind of route as most people, but I don't know. So I first got into programming through modifying video games. And what we would do is take apart a game with no API or SDK. We would disassemble the executables and figure out how they worked. And this is kind of unrelated, but this is what sparked my interest in reverse engineering. And so more recently, I've got interested in electronics and radio and kind of carried forward that in interest in reverse engineering to that. Can you go closer to the microphone? Oh, sure. Test, is that better? Test? Yeah. Cool, thanks. OK, so some people might not know why reverse engineering is an interesting topic to look at. So, and also just what it is. So um, what I'm talking about in this context is looking at an existing radio system and just figuring out how it works without any documentation or anything, just looking at the outputs from it. And the reason why I'm interested in this is there's tons of devices around where the manufacturers have come up with their own protocol and you can't interface with it and you can't check out how it works. So one of the interesting things is security research. A lot of people will, a lot of manufacturers will create this device with no thoughts about security just because you know it's RF, it's invisible, no one will look at it. Um, and then the other thing is interoperability. If you have a device where you want to have a look at how it works, whether you want to read something from it or control it yourself, then you need to figure out how it works. So I've kind of split it up into three main parts, the, the kind of process you go through to figure out a signal. And the first one is signal discovery. And you look in sort of a real-time application for that and check out what frequency it's on, what sort of bandwidth it has. Next up is the details of the physical layer, the modulation, deviation, symbol rate, whether it needs a preamble, whether uh, the sort of length of the preamble, sync words, CRCs. That's how you get synced up with the packet and actually get the bits out. And then the last one is the actual data detail I put there. Um, so actual packet structure, what the actual data means once you get the bits. So the first one for signal discovery, um, stuff like GQRX, as Bastian was talking about, and I quite like Osmocom FFT with GR Phosphor here. Um, really simple interface, and it just gives you an FFT and a waterfall really fast as well, which is good for packetized information. Um, and the other great thing is the little record button in the bottom corner. So you can take a recording of everything you're seeing, all the raw data, the raw samples, and save it to a file for working with later on. So I'm going to skip the phi details and come back to it for a sec. So this is the sort of last step once you've actually got some bits. You might go into GNU Radio and build a flow graph for it. And this allows you to actually have an automated receiver for the packets. Now, um, I'll go into a little explanation to this, but it's, it's similar to stuff that's been shown in other talks. So we've got the Osmocom source here, which connects up to a lot of different SDR devices. I use a HackRF, um, and that just gets your raw samples in. And then the frequency translating FIR filter is just shifting it, your desired signal down to zero and low pass just to select it. And then quadrature demod for the FM demod, clock recovery, slicing so you get zeros and ones. And then there's pattern dump block, looks for a pattern in the bits, which is the start of a packet, and then puts it out to a message sync, which goes, in my case, to a Python script to actually process the data. So coming back to the physical layer details, this is where I think it gets a bit tricky with the current tools. So it's difficult to get right on a single packet to have a close look at it. 
Um, in GNU Radio, for example, you can set up triggers and GUI elements and have a look at it. But once you've triggered, you can't really zoom in or you can't step back. Um, so that gets a bit difficult. The other thing is clock recovery. And I, th I think a lot of new people to these sort of digital systems stumble on that. And there are really good algorithms for, um, wait a sec, let me just explain what clock recovery is for anyone who's missed that. Um, so it's the process of synchronizing up with the packet that's coming in so that you sample right in the middle of each symbol. So you don't want to sample right on a transition because you might decode it wrong. And so there are really good algorithms for that. Um, but the problem is they take a bit of tweaking to get right sometimes. And when you're decoding an unknown signal, you can't test it. You can't put the signal in and know what is supposed to come out because you don't know yet. So what people often do is resort to manually decoding. And that's good because it gives you real confidence in the data. You can have a look at the, the sort of various stages and just manually do it. But it, it leads to some fairly silly examples like this one, where I'm just using pen and paper up against the waterfall to see what the signal is and figure out the timing. And uh, Bastian mentioned something similar with Audacity, which is really handy that Audacity can load it up, but it's, it's not quite designed for it. So what I've been working on is a tool called Inspectrum, which hopefully solves some of these problems or at least helps out a bit. So what Inspectrum is is an offline signal analyzer. And what I mean by that is it's offline, so there's no real-time elements. There's no sort of streaming in there. You just give it a file, and it loads the whole file, and you can just look back and forth as you want throughout it, zoom in, zoom out. And then I'll show a bit more about it in a second, but then you can also apply some extra transforms and plot some extra information from that. So I'm going to go to a quick demo because it's easier to explain it that way. Uh, so I'll just get set up. So what I've got here is a little remote control for a wireless uh, light bulb. And um, what I'm going to do first is get rid of all this. Uh, we need to get a recording of the data coming in. So I'm going to use Osmocom FFT like in the screenshot earlier. And so what I'm doing here is just enabling phosphor, tuning to 2.4 gigahertz, and setting the sample rate to the full 20 mega samples per second. So we start that up, and we start getting some Wi-Fi coming in. And if I start pressing buttons on the remote, you can see a really clear signal there. So what I'm going to do with that now is just hit record and start pressing some buttons and hit stop. That's all I need from that. And now I can run in Spectrum on that. And this is what you get when you load up a file in Inspectrum. So what we've got here is the, the classic sort of spectrogram, uh, maybe slightly different than some applications will show it. But what we've got on the vertical axis is frequency, on the horizontal axis is time, and then the color represents the power. So I can just scroll through this and look for anything interesting. We've got the occasional bits of Wi-Fi, which I'm not interested in. But now you can see some bright colors there, and that's the, the actual packets coming in from the remote control. So we can then zoom in on that and start to see a bit more. And we can tweak some of the settings to get it looking good. It looks fairly good there. And the other nice thing is you can play around with the FFT size so you get more time resolution. So if I take that right down, you can kind of almost see some data in there. It's not very clear because it's quite a fast signal, but you can, you can kind of see it, it graduating between two different frequencies there. So 
because it's not very clear, what I will go on and do is use some of the next features so we can add a derived plot from that data and plot the frequency. So what this does now is bring up this tuner interface. So this is much like the sort of tuner you'll get in GQRX and similar applications. And you can just drag that over the signal, set your filter width, and this is then shifting it to the center, filtering it, and passing it through to this frequency plot. And you can see we, get, we then get the data there. So you can see it's now, this is plotting instantaneous frequency of the signal. And you can see fairly clearly it looks like data. We've got the preamble at the start there, where it's just alternating zeros and ones, and then the rest of the data there. And so, and so going on from that, we can then plot some more information from that. So I'm just going to plot a threshold of that data. So that's just slicing it. If it's above 0, it's a 1. If it's below 0, it's a 0. And now we can start playing around and try and figure out some timings for this data. So what we've got is this curses function where you can measure the time between the two cursors. So that's quite handy. You can start to try and measure the actual symbol rate. And I, what I've mistaken here is I need to put the sample rate in, which was 20 meg samples. So you can see roughly the symbol period, the symbol rate is around 1 megahertz. And, um, what you can also do to get that a bit, to get a bit more precision there, is up the number of symbols here. And that will split the cursors into a bunch of even sections. So as you drag it along, you get these, these separate sections. And then you can line all of those up on the transitions and get a fairly good idea of what the symbol rate is. And it's dead on one meg. And then the other thing you can do with that is start to look at, zoom right out, and look at the time between packets, which might be useful. So it's about 285 hertz between the repeated packets there. Um, and then one final feature to have a look at, I'll zoom back in, is you can use this to do a really basic form of clock recovery. So I showed earlier my fairly manual method of using pen and paper. Uh, what's quite handy is you can set up this cursor and use that as your timing. And so if I zoom back in, And set that up about right. What you can do is right click on one of these plots and go to extract symbols. And what that will do is sample that plot in the middle of each cursor point and just give you a list of symbols. The UI isn't great at the moment, so it just goes to standard out. But what you get there is just the symbols that you can then work with. And um, it, it's a bit tedious to do it one by one, but when you're on this first stage of reverse engineering, you really need that confidence to see that it matches up with what you can see there in the plots. And so it just gives you, you can get those first few packets really easily, start doing some work, and then maybe go back to GNU Radio and build a receiver from that info. Uh, so I think that's about it for the demo. And that covers in Spectrum, I think. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for this really very interesting insight Thank you. in the Spectrum tool. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, well, it's not really a question, but more a feature request. Uh, do we have a feature, for example, extracting clock automatically, for example, using a Costas loop, or other well, general ways for uh, extracting uh, 
on the basic rate of the signal in the preamble? Uh, so I would like to speak to you a bit more about that if you've got some specific suggestions, because, yeah, that would be interesting. Any more questions? I see no more questions, so then thank you very, very much for your talk. Thank you very much. Applause to our speaker.